Good afternoon, everyone. Another article talking about the mini ice age, but this time it states that human activity leads to both periods of warming and cooling. As well, throughout the mainstream media, you start to see more and more of these articles talking about Atlantic cooling, mini ice age, solar minimums. The ECHAM model referenced in the article is eerily similar to today's sea surface temperature anomalies as well as the AMO going cool. And if you think it couldn't get any weirder, robots growing lettuce hydroponically. The article titled Chance of Experiencing a Real Life Day After Tomorrow. It talks about a mini ice age, but in the same breath, explains that human-caused activity, i.e. CO2, leads to both periods of warming and cooling. How can that possibly be both? And then it goes on in the next couple of paragraphs to say, and now please try not to fall off your chair laughing when you read this, a period of climate warming resulting in a hurried catastrophic reduction in global temperatures It was trying to explain that we're warming the atmosphere so much that it's now going to cool. And staying on the theme of cool, notice how many mainstream media articles are suddenly coming out talking about mini ice age, Atlantic cooling, solar minimums, and a planet getting cool and full of snow because of too much CO2 and warming, now flipping the switch into cooling. And if you want to take an objective look and to see how the models might be flawed, let's take a look at how many different types of climate oscillation there are that need to be put into the models which aren't really characterized for their true values leading to the outcomes which we should see but we're not. The full list is here from the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation, El Nino, Southern oscillation, Pacific decadal oscillation, PDO. Interdecadal Pacific Oscillation, Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, North Pacific Oscillation, Solar Variability, Solar Cycles, 30-month climate cycles, 60-year climate cycles. I think 97% of them got it wrong. That I can concur on. Jumping back to the article, it does reference the AMO and the circulatory currents. It's a jumbled mix inside the article trying to explain how it's going to cool and why it's cooling. All blamed on CO2 and us, of course. It couldn't be a natural cycle. When we look at the AMO, trend lines definitely show a cycle that repeats. The current forecast for AMO cooling around 2020 is when it's going to really get cool. The article here, Sibren Driftot, has been published using the climate model ECHAM. And what it's trying to simulate is when the AMO goes cold, what happens on our planet temperature-wise. Now, they put out two variables. One, when the AMO goes cold, and then the other scenario without an AMOC collapse. On the left, referenced B image shows degrees below today's temperatures when it does go cold. To the right, C, if there is no cooling of the Atlantic What I found really interesting on the image B, that was referenced heat uptake from 1950 to the year 2000. Yet a lot of those numbers and variables are showing negative, which is the opposite of what they were saying would happen during global warming. What I did find anomalous was how this model is very similar in some areas on our planet currently with the daily sea surface temperature anomaly for August of 2015. Notice around Japan, it shows the same cooling. The North Atlantic around Greenland, Hudson Bay, Baffin Island, it shows the exact same cooling. Africa and South America shows the same cooling. This image is interesting that it shows how many years it would take for the surface air of the sea to return back to the 1990 to 2000 baseline norm for that 10 year segment. Some areas would take 280 years to return after the cooling. 
So I did dig around to look for some sea surface temperature maps across just a different array of sources. The one that you'll be most familiar with that's always in the newspapers and always on every news media outlet is this land and ocean temperature gradient from NOAA that comes out monthly. They call it now the cold blob that's under Greenland. This is a 3D model of what the subsurface of the Arctic Ocean looks like. So you can see how the currents could circulate through there. I'm just going to point out a couple ideas and things here and I want you to make your own opinion. This is from Climate Monitoring Ocean Temperature. I would like you A to notice the area to the right off of Africa showing zero temperature decreases and just a slight one degree negative temperature decrease in some splotchy areas. I would also like you to look at Kamchatka Peninsula around Japan and also the entire southern hemisphere down at the bottom line where the degree markers are. Notice that snapshot. This is from NESDIS. Take a look at the difference in the temperatures. Africa, west around Japan, and the entire southern ocean below Chile and below Australia. Next temperature set comparison. This global sea surface temperature map comes from NOAA, the National Center for Environmental Information. I would like you to focus on sandwiched between Greenland and Baffin Island in Canada right in that area in the Labrador Sea. Top right you can see Greenland just go a little bit south of there take a look you'll see that greenish blob but I want you to notice the red in between there and then also jump over to Japan and a little bit north you're gonna see that finger coming down the Kamchatka Peninsula notice inside there really dark red and almost the uh, brick reds inside the southern ocean below Australia. You'll notice some different cooling patterns on this Unisys sea surface temperature. And these are all dated the 26th of August. And if you want to zoom in on another spot to take a really close look, look at the tip of South America. Notice that. And notice the cooling on this one that's being shown in a little more detail. As always, having a little fun, a new article talking about how robots are going to grow lettuce hydroponically to add into our food source when we need to go underground because of the solar minimum decimating our crops above ground. Robots will take your job. They're going to grow your food and they're going to supply you with vegetables. Yay, during the new grand solar minimum. So at least you have that to look forward to over the next 20 years. Thanks for watching. As always, remember to subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030, and pass this information along.